2012 CAA Football Media Day Live. The head coach just uh, sitting into the chair. 14th yes, season you head into. Uh, eight and five last year, five and three in the conference. Uh, Two-time national coach of the year. Uh, but we focus now on 2012. And uh, this season, what do you expect out of your team? You come off a season it was kind of a roller coaster year for you. Well, the the reason it's a roller coaster because our is because our quarterback was suspended for five games. And, yeah. uh, you know we. We've been a dominant defensive football team for the last forever. And everybody's giving me a hard time. You know, the two players I brought down here this year are two offensive guys. So that's, that's very un, un jmu ish <laughs> But I think there's no question that in our season, you know, we, we think Justin Thorpe has the ability, you know, to be the top player in the nation. I mean, he's the best quarterback we've ever had. Uh, you know, two years ago, he suffered a major knee injury. And he, came, he really wasn't that healthy, but he came back and practiced some last August. And as the season, you know, the first four or five games where he was playing, he had some great games. You know, we, we, we've, we left Williamsburg last year. We thought we were the hottest team in the nation. You know, mm -hmm. we'd beaten Liberty in the fourth quarter down there. We'd beaten uh, Whib and Mary in Williamsburg. And then on Sunday, he was suspended for five weeks. So it really, the reason you bring up the roller coaster. Yeah. Situation that that was the deal, and when he would turn, we were good. We weren't as good as we were in September. But we had a good football team, so there's no question. Hopefully, he has matured both on and off the field, and we'll see how it goes. Uh, we're taking Twitter questions throughout the day uh -huh. at the underscore CAA football. What has come in? Um, let's see. Well, we'll get we'll get back to that. I got I've got it on my phone. I understand. It's not it's not easy. A little scary always. taking Twitter questions. It's, it, it it always is, isn't it? <laughs> How much – you talked about Justin Thorpe um, and the suspension last year. How much do you think a young player like that grows from an experience like that? And, and is a team that's going to depend on him a lot this upcoming season? Well, as, as they say in Texas, we're, we're, we're fixing to find out. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, I think he had a great spring. I, I, I told my staff during spring training, it was the first spring training I could ever remember that our – our offense in several scrimmages got the best of our defense, and it was because of the play of Justin. So if he continues down the path he's going in terms of a, of a player and his maturity level, you know, he's going to have a terrific year. You know, our last year in December, after all what happened, our players still, by vote of the players, elected him their offensive MVP. So he's a very popular member of the team. You said you brought two of your student athletes who are offensive players. Yeah. So let's talk defense then. Give me an idea of how good this Duke's defense can be. Well, we lost two guys we thought would, would be significant losses. We lost D.J. Bryant, defensive end. We lost Pat Williams, a linebacker. And everyone else we lost on defense we think we can replace with, uh, with better players. Mm -hmm. So we feel like we're going to be good on defense. You know, we're uh, traditionally we've been good. That's going to be the name of my book when I get old is <laughs> you can't punt on defense. You know, because you, uh, I, you know, I, I made this comment many times that you know, as long as I'm the coach of James Madison, we're going to be good on defense. Right. You know, and we have been, but our guys can run. You know, we're known as a very athletic defensive football team, and I would anticipate we play very well this year. Uh, your linebacker there, Robertson, he's uh, preseason all-conference, right. but he was left off the Buck Buchanan watch list. It's still preseason. <laughs> Is that something that can motivate a player? Is he? Uh, well, Stefan plays very hard. Probably the, the thing that hurts, you know, that's based on numbers. Right. Uh, I've spoken to many guys in the league, and they think Stefan's probably the best defensive player in the league. What hurts Stefan's numbers, he's surrounded by some great defensive right. players. He doesn't have to make the tackle every snap. You know, there are, you know, you look at some of those guys that have the large, the big numbers nationwide, and they play on some very poor defensive football teams. If they don't make the tackle, it's not going to get made. Right. And, Stefan is surrounded by some very good football players. Uh, there's no one in the league I would trade him for. Uh, but he's really had a good summer, good spring. He's matured. Uh, we're, we're really anticipating he'll play very well. I'm sure your team is looking forward to September 1st to kick off the season. I want to ask you, though, about week three. You'll play against West Virginia at <laughs> FedEx Field. Uh, bright lights, uh, lights uh, the big stage, the whole deal. Uh, what's that? sort of experience I'm sure in the back of your players minds I know there's two games before that but I'm sure that's a big one you'll circle on the calendar for players well it'll be interesting 
when our administration, Mr. Bourne, called and asked me that you know, the opportunity was there, I really thought, well, you know, so anyway, we, <laughs> I thought about it for a day or two, and that's JMU country, you know, we'll have 20,000 right. people there, so I thought, well, that'd be good. So, you know, I thought it'd be a good experience for our university, for our players, everyone connect with James. So anyway, uh, I said, let's do it. Now, last year when I was watching that bowl game, when they were running Clemson out of the stadium, I, I didn't feel real smart. I thought, who agreed to that game? But they're good. But our, our players enjoy the game. You know, we're not afraid to play anyone. And, and, and certainly uh, playing West Virginia will be a challenge. We'll have to play very well to be in the game. I think everyone knows that. Coach, let me ask you this. That gap between what, Division One and yeah. Division One AA um, has closed so much in the recent years. Uh, what has been the reason behind the uh, so many upsets we see between the, the two, yeah. but uh, why is that gap closed? I didn't realize they closed that much. I, I think the biggest, like, I'm a little concerned about the game being played at 430 instead of at nighttime because it's going to be so hot because mm -hmm. they, they have 85 scholarships and we have 63. But it's going to be, it, it's, uh, it, we always say this, you know, th their top 30, 40 players are better than our top 30 or 40. But when you get just 11 of them out there, sometimes there's not that much of a difference between the two ball clubs. And they may have a guy or two that I know one year we went down and played Virginia Tech years ago. And I remember watching the tape on Sunday. If you take Michael Vick out of the game, you know, we, it would have been a much tighter game. And so this, things like that can happen. They can have an individual or two that has tipped the scales their way. So we, we, we'll see what we're going to do. It, it's, we have a lot of veteran players. And that they believe they can't compete with West Virginia. You open the season at home against St. Francis of Pennsylvania September 1st. Best of luck in the opener and best of luck this upcoming season.